Welcome back to Hill Farms. Today we're at Bloomer's Flower Farm. This is our little side business where we raise cut flowers. So one of the things we found out about raising flowers, it's like raising vegetables. Not only do people like them, but so do the rabbits and the, and the deer and a few other critters. So we found out in a hurry we're going to have to put a fence up or we won't have a big flower crop. So today we're going to put a fence around to try to keep some of the animals out. So we need a few supplies. I picked up that tractor supply, this handy dandy fiberglass stake. It's about three foot tall, has a nice metal prong on the end. We have a lot of rock here, so it's hard to get anything in the ground. So I'm hoping these are going to go in pretty easy. They have nice little clips on here to attach our wire. And the wire we're going to try to use is a poultry wire, uh, one inch, should keep most of the stuff out. Uh, we're going to put it close to the ground, try to keep uh, close enough that it'll allow us to bend where the ground changes because everything's not even here. So that should go a long way into, into making a nice tight fit. So let's get started. Okay, our first step is to lay out the stakes. So we decided we're gonna put these on five foot centers. Just so happens that our hoops are on five foot center. So all I have to do is go and lay out a post at each stake and we'll have our five foot. If you don't have hoops or something like that to mark, you just need to measure it out and you'll know how far. If you go too far, it's gonna get saggy and you don't wanna put the extra stakes in because of the cost of it. So you wanna find just the right distance for yourself. So we're gonna put all these stakes out here first and then we're gonna pound them in. Okay, now we're gonna pound the stakes in. So we have black paper all around the outside perimeter of our flower patch. So on that black paper, we have lines. So we're just gonna follow the lines. They don't run perfectly straight, but they're, they're, they're pretty close. So if you're at home and you don't have paper down and you want a straight line, I would just put a stake on each end, tie a string to the top of it, and then use that as a guide. So we're just gonna go here, if you look closely here, there's green lines here, and we're gonna follow this line all the way down to the end. So now we have a lot of rock here, so it's a real challenge to try to hammer these things straight. So we do the best we can and try to get straight so we have a nice straight looking fence. So we're just gonna, that one goes in pretty easy. So we're just gonna continue going right down. We're gonna follow this, we're gonna line it up on the mark here and we're gonna line it up with our, with our hoop. That gives us our five foot, which we've determined is a, is a pretty good. So there we go, so we hit a rock. So now that's a problem. So we're gonna have to move it a little bit. We hate to keep putting holes in our black paper, but you have to try to find a place that you can hammer it through. And sometimes you can power through it, sometimes you can't, but. So we're just gonna keep doing this all the way down until we have all the stakes in. So we're gonna keep doing that and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, now we're to the corner. We're gonna do this a little bit different. If you take notice, these white uh, fiberglass poly stakes, whatever they are, they're very flexible. So you can't really use, it, uh, use them for a solid corner. So I'm gonna make a rounded corner instead of a square corner. And here's how we're gonna do that. Okay, we found our mark. We're gonna pound the first one in in line. And of course, we're gonna hit a rock, make this a little more difficult. Okay, so that's the first one. Then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna set the first one in the other line. Now this one here, so I can mow the grass, I'm not gonna go down along the green line, I'm gonna go in the middle to give me a little bit more room. So you don't wanna be right up against, because the way we fold this underneath, uh, you wanna be able to have plenty of room. Okay, so now we have our corner in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these little steel stakes that I have laying around and I'm gonna put this like right in the middle and just out a little bit. And this is just gonna firm things up for us so we can pull this tight. So I'm just gonna to try to find the right spot. And... Okay, and that makes for a pretty good corner. That way you can pull your wire around there and it doesn't sag in. All right, so we're going to finish pounding in the rest of these stakes. All right, now we're ready to roll out our wire. As I said earlier, we're using poultry netting, 36 inch. This is a 150 foot roll. It's a little cheaper the more you buy. So lay it down here at the end, put some bricks on to hold it. Otherwise, it's going to roll up behind you. And then we just roll it out. Best to roll it out the whole way so you can pull it tight. Of course, it's always going to go crooked. So you got to straighten it out every so often. But but roll it out at least to the corner to get started. And then you can adjust from there. All 
Okay, if you look here, we've left about a foot or two extra wire. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna wrap it around the pole and that's how we're gonna make our starting point. Now, this is important. If you wanna have extra so you can put it down so the wraps have a hard time getting under. If you measure these up, okay, this notch here, not the top one, but the second one down, is 32 to 34 inches, okay? Our wire is 36 inches, so if you latch the very top line onto this clip here, that'll give you around two to four inches of extra wire on the bottom, and we'll show you how we do that. That's gonna make it hard for the rabbits to get underneath. So th that's important, because if you just put it flush against the bottom and put it in that top one, they're gonna go underneath, because they're wiry little buggers. So we got our assistant down there who was planning we're gonna bring her into this. So we're just gonna take this here. We know we have the extra wire here. And then we're gonna start by latching on the first one. And then you just work your way down, pulling this down like this. And try to follow your line down and then you'll be straight. You can see what goes in. See how we're going down here. Pulling that down. Okay, see how we're getting a fold down here at the bottom. And that's what we're looking for. These clips work real nice for what we're doing here. Getting a little crooked, but that's all right. Now, underneath here, look at this here. On the underside of this step right here, there's a little bit of a, uh, a point here, a little spike. So what we want to do is we want to take our wire, put it underneath, and catch it onto that spike. So now you can see we have this extra wire here, and that's what we were looking for. So then this just gets bent around like this, and you see how these are flimsy here. And then we're gonna take this here and we're gonna zip tie this uh, fast. But for now, I'm just gonna bend this over. And I'm gonna come back to this later. So you can pull this all together, zip tie it, and make that nice and neat. So then you're gonna go to the next, onto the next post, and you wanna do the same thing, okay? It's a little unwieldy at first when you're first trying to get started, but once you get a couple in, it goes pretty pretty good. So we're, we're picking the second one down, we're gonna catch the first, the first, uh, or the first line on this wire, and then we work our way down. And you're just gonna do this the whole way down. You wanna keep it tight here at the top, because if you don't, you're gonna get a sag. And then over time, the wire's gonna get a little rusty and what have you, and you don't want people to be scratching themselves, and then you gotta go to the hospital and get a tetanus shot and all that fun stuff that you should have anyway, but. So remember, underneath, catch it under that point. Now, if you look at this here, now we have a nice base. We have a couple options here of what we can do because it still is gonna come up a little bit at spots. You can either just set some bricks on here or what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the, uh, the garden staples and we're gonna put a couple staples in here, hold that down real good. And that should make for a pretty good barrier to keep the rabbits out. So now we're gonna continue on, put the rest of this wire on, and then we're gonna come back and show you we improvised the gate system here we're trying to keep the cost down uh if money wasn't an object we'd be doing all this different but uh, you know we're doing this we're trying to make some money so we're trying to keep the cost down all right so we're going to finish up putting the fence now okay as you can see here we got most of our fencing up we gotta go run for more supplies because someone figured wrong but anyway uh we got it fairly tight snug here in the bottom now to keep things from going underneath you have an option here you can either put some uh landscape uh staples in uh, to hold this down or maybe just some bricks or something like that it's fairly tight as it is here now and that was the nice thing about the, the poultry wire you can kind of bend it to the contour of the land which is important so come over here last thing we got to show you i guess is the gate so this is not exactly uh your typical gate but it's something that we came up with to try to keep the cost down went into the lows and we got a no dig fencing by ironcraft okay it's really uh, more of a, a fence than it is a gate but we're going to customize it and make it into a gate so we figured out what our distance was that we needed and got these rods this gate here for the, the gate and the two rods is around twenty dollars so it has a hinge here on the side so we're going to run the stake down through the hinge and we're going to try to keep it fairly close here to this to this post all right so now they can sneak by there in the side and we're just going to drive it down in Now, you don't want to drive this all the way down because the whole idea behind this is so you can open it. You want to be able to lift it up and then swing it open, okay? So you want to leave enough play. You don't want to hammer this all the way down. Otherwise, you're going to run into some problems. So all we're looking to do here is 
we want to have a stop so the gate doesn't swing in. All right, so we're going to try to hammer this straight. This side here, you can hammer down further. Now this is important, but you want it to be stable so that it'll hold your gate in place. So, I think that's going to work. Lift up, open. We have it setting right on top of our, of our irrigation line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some zip ties and I'm going to zip tie this fast here on the hinge side so that it gives it some extra support. And When you're doing this, you got to be careful that you don't put it right here at the hinge, otherwise you won't be able to lift up on it. So then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to pull these two together. And doing this, it firms up our, our post here so that it doesn't give way. And you see that gives us a fairly tight fit there. So then the final thing, I'm going to put a couple more zip ties on there, but the final thing is how we're going to keep this from coming open. So we went and we bought some cheap carab carabiners in at uh, Walmart. And with that, you can just kind of, we're just going to put these on here like this. And you put it on like that. Same thing down here. Figuring we're not going in this a whole lot, so it's not as important uh, that it's, you know, super easy. But there you have a pretty secure gate. So if you're still worried about little rabbits getting through this bigger opening, just take a piece of the poultry wire here in the lower half and just zip tie it in there and that'll stop the rabbits from going in. So then when you want to come in, hopefully this is the way it's going to work. You're just going to take this off here like that and you can leave it, leave that hang on there and do the same thing here and swing it open and you're in. So now we're probably going to leave this open. We're not going to be closing it while we're in here working. We're more worried about it at night, rabbits coming in here. We got the higher, we were going to go with two foot fence. We decided to go with three foot fence because we figured it'd give us a little bit of deer protection. If you really want deer protection, you've got to go up six, eight foot high because they can jump a lot, uh, a lot higher than what you think. And if they find something that they really want in your garden, they will jump the fence. So you'd have to go real high. So this isn't really a deer fence, uh, but it's a little bit of a deterrent. That's what we're really going for. So cost of doing this, I figure a running foot for the wire and the post, that part of it, it's about a dollar a foot. So you can figure out, you know, how many feet you have around your garden. Uh, you might be able to get a better price on that if you look for stuff on sale, get a better price on the poultry wire. And uh, once again, you have uh, the gates around $20. We put four gates in because we don't want to have to walk. Uh, we have about 150 foot of uh, beds here, so it's, it's pretty far to walk. So we want to have access to get in and out of our, in and out of our beds. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the, uh, the only other thing, like I said, on the bottom, we might come here and put something so they can't get underneath. And we'll make adjustments as we go here, as we see how it works. But last night, the rabbits were in here and they, they did a little bit of damage. Uh, so we're trying to avoid that. We're gonna see how it works tonight and we'll make adjustments as we go. But all in all, it came together pretty quick. I think you're probably looking at it. It took us around four hours to put this whole thing in place off and on throughout the day because we were doing other projects here on the farm. So hopefully, Bloomer's Flower Farm will now be protected from Peter Cottontail. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video and I hope it helps you out. Thanks a lot.